Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the No Easy Way Out podcast. My name is Tony Nash and we are coming to you as always from the armory in beautiful downtown Owasso, home to my company AZ Business Solutions, where we help grow your brand from A to Z. Now I am joined today, I'm so excited about our guest today, uh, someone I've been trying to get on our podcast since season one, since day one, but our schedules just have never aligned. Uh, He's an accomplished entrepreneur, restaurateur, He's a family man, love his family, great kids, great wife. He's a master smoker. We're going to talk a lot about that today. And he's the owner of everyone's favorite real Michigan barbecue restaurant, Johnny V's. And he is one of our favorite clients to work with uh, and to visit. We spend a lot of money and lunch breaks over there. Uh, but most importantly, he's become a great friend to me, and that is Mr. Kevin Dietrich. Mr. Dietrich, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it, and thank you for the kind words. Yeah, we're so excited to have you, and uh, we've been working together for a little while now. Um, we actually met when I first started my company. I mean, I was just starting out. I had made the nerve-wracking decision to leave a really good job and jump out into the world of entrepreneurship. I knew I had a good idea. I knew I had some skills, but you know, I also have five kids or six kids or however many I have. I don't even know, but I knew I had to uh, make some money. Right. Um, and so I jumped out and, uh, man, within the first couple of weeks, I got a call from Mr. Kevin Dietrich. I was actually at my house. That's where my office was. I wasn't even dressed yet. I don't know if you know that part, <laughs> but <try> uh, <laughs> he called and said, Hey, I'm uh, gonna be purchasing uh, at that time smoking Johnny V's, and uh, the two owners said that you are the marketing guru, and I needed to talk to you. And at that time, I'm like, I had just got started. I'm like, I don't know if I'm a guru, but I like to think that other people think right. that I am. And you said, uh, you know, I'd love to have you come in and talk about how you can help uh, get our, you know, we we have some ideas. We're gonna do some rebranding. We're gonna, and then uh, I came in. And we started talking, and immediately there was a connection because we really have the same philosophy of hospitality. Obviously, the previous 10 years of my life was in the hospitality industry. And so hearing your philosophy of hospitality, and you said one thing, I don't know if you remember what it was. I do. That stuck out to me, and I said, this is someone I want to work with. Do you remember what it was? I hope it was always do the right thing. That's exactly what it was. You said, anything that I do, I just purpose to always do the right thing. And you said to me, first time I'd ever had a client say this, you said, I'm not looking for a discount. He said, I'm not looking to get beat up on price either. I just Mm -hmm. give me the fair price. And that was took a lot of pressure off, because when you're first starting out, you're like, Somebody's like, hey, will you build me a website for 50 bucks? I'm like, sold. Like, <laughs> you're just trying to get money in. Amen. So to know that I was working with somebody that was serious about growing their brand. And as we've developed over the years, we have learned that the only way we can be effective is if we really work with people that are serious about growing their brand and willing to invest some money into it and really do the things the right way. And Johnny V's has been the gold standard, in my opinion, of that. And you were, I think, our third client. I believe so. Um, one of the things I'm proud of is those first five clients I ever got are still with me today. Absolutely. Uh, but Johnny V's has really been for us um, just an absolute joy to work with, not just because you guys have amazing barbecue, and every time I bring barbecue here or we go there with the staff, it's always their best day. I appreciate that. But because it's just been an easy relationship, it's been a fun relationship, um, we see eye to eye, and there's been a lot of trust established between the two of that. So it has been just an incredible journey, and I've enjoyed getting to know you and your family. And so I, I would like you to take a few minutes and just tell our audience a little bit about yourself and kind of what you got going on right now in the world of Johnny V's. Well, before I jump into that, I also want to reciprocate and say (laughs) thank you so much for all those kind words. And uh, you said a key word that I've used in my business life forever, and that is relationships. I'm always looking to build a relationship, not a one-time stop shop. Um, we know that you have to win, we have to win in order for this relationship to continue. Right. So you guys have been outstanding. I, I love being part of that entry level where you guys were just getting started and uh, trust was gained through our relationship with, uh, you know, we're both fa- family men, we're yep. both uh, believers and, yep. and we have our faith. And, and when you have that standard to start off with, uh, it's easy to go down the road of business 
using discernment, making sure that, uh, you know, you hold true to your values and beliefs and that, and all of those. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been a very easy and fun relationship and I appreciate that. And I do agree, like the common core values of who we are as men certainly helps, uh, guide that along the way. But you know, our, our mission statement includes the phrase, we are only successful when we help our clients achieve success. And you know, Johnny V's has on its own stood alone and become, you know, a force in the barbecue world, especially in the state of Michigan. But I like to think we've had some small part in helping get the word out, at least about how Johnny V's operates and what they do. And we love working with it. And, you know, it's, uh, like I said, we, uh, some clients are challenging because, Mm -hmm. you know, the industry is unique or there's, you know, not a lot of people want to follow that type of thing. But a lot of people love barbecue, but they don't love bad barbecue. Mm-hmm. And I had an experience with that a few weeks ago that I told you about. Yeah. I won't call them out online. It wasn't Johnny V's, that's for sure. And now now that I compare every barbecue place to Johnny V's, they always seem to fall a little short. But um, but it's just been a fun, fun client to work with. But again, like I said, it's become so much more than just client relationship. It's really, I consider you a friend and a mentor. And there's been times where I've called you for advice, like, hey, I don't know what to do here, the company's growing, and you've always been generous and in, in sharing your mind and experience, so I appreciate that as well. Well, we d- definitely appreciate that too. So, Okay, so currently, you are the owner of Johnny V's Smokehouse, Smoke Shack, Johnny V's Real Michigan Barbecue in Perry. Um, tell your tell our audience in your own words. You know, we I can tell them what makes Johnny V's special, and I have a lot, and I'll continue to do that. But in your own words, what do you think it is that makes Johnny V's a special place? Well, what we've <clears> tried to do over the years is, once again, we bought Smokin' Johnny V's Barbecue Bistro. My it's background awful. is uh, from marketing, so that's exactly what you and I had decided from the beginning. That is, that's a lot to roll off the tongue, mm-hmm. whether you're answering the phone or you're trying to welcome your first-time guest to Johnny V's. Uh, so with us being able to uh, connect with Johnny Vincent Sanat, who is mm-hmm. the original founder of Johnny V's and still a friend to this day, mm-hmm. um, you know, he had run into some health issues, a uh, great person, love him, uh, started off a great restaurant. Um, I would often say, because Susan and I would go there quite often. And it was my wife's favorite restaurant to go to. Yes, it was. It was the pork sliders that brought her through the door. (laughs) And even if, uh, because we all can be good on certain days and better on others. And uh, if if maybe uh, I tried something new and that just wasn't, you know, what I thought I wanted, uh, Susan would stay true to the sliders and she loved it. So I always say to my (laughs) friends, how often do you get to buy your wife's favorite restaurant? Yeah. So that was that was a cool, (laughs) that was a cool gig. That's a cool present. So uh, for us, as far as uh, Johnny V's and what makes it so important is that uh, we smoke fresh every day. Uh, We rub anywhere from 18 to 24 hours in advance with proprietary in-house rubs. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are chef-inspired, recipe-driven, means that uh, it doesn't come out of a box or a bag. We have to prepare it for you. We do that rather quickly in in the Perry location. Uh, We really enjoy it. So for us, it's always been, it's all about the food Mm -hmm. because that's what starts the journey. And then we're real big believers in Southern hospitality. So at at our restaurant, uh, it's a must, but it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's it's never going to be your welcome or not a problem. Those sound like inconveniences to me. (laughs) Right. Uh, we travel quite a bit, and we're down in the south and, and maybe in different parts of the country or the world. And uh, when you find people doing it right, it's an inspiration to bring mm-hmm. that back home to the Midwest yeah. and show Michigan, not only can we smoke with the, the other states, I always say it like this, I'm not from Texas, although I love everything about this great state of Texas. Um, We're not from Texas, therefore we don't use mesquite wood when we smoke. We're not from Georgia, therefore we don't use pecan. Great woods, love Mm. to have them. What we wanted to do was use locally sourced woods, apple, cherry, hickory, from farms nearby that we could have cut and that we could use. And those are great woods to smoke with. The soft Mm. woods, the apples, the cherries are good on pork and chicken. Uh, and then when you're dealing with a, a big, you know, piece of beef, you know, you need a deep penetrating hickory wood to do that or an oak or something of that. Yeah. So, um, 
Real Michigan Barbecue, that was a journey that you and I went yeah. on before we tagged it, yeah. trademarked it, registered it, copyright. Uh, the attorneys did everything <laughs> they the had logo, to do. All of it, yeah, yeah, made the logo. And, and you were instrumental in all of those, uh, AZ. But you as yeah. a person, uh, it was nice having that, that uh, client, uh, pr- you know, president of, the, of the, uh, the company that's representing us, that we could shake hands. Fortunately, we both live in Owasso, Michigan, so we could yeah. meet up whenever we needed to. You're a good customer of ours. We'd like to be a great client of yours. Uh, so we're always looking at, uh, once again, building those relationships. Yeah. But locally sourced woods, uh, I'm from Cherry Capital of the World. My family is, Traverse City, Michigan. I like to use that whenever we can. Yeah. Uh, so we infuse cherry into everything we can, the mm-hmm. fruits and the flavors. And uh, what we wanted to do was take real Michigan barbecue, which is something that you and I had both come up with. Mm-hmm. We were thinking of what can we do? Johnny V's is the brand. What can we do for a tagline? that will interest people to want to get off the highway, take <laughs> yeah. a journey, uh, go up up north a little farther if they're from the south, east, west, and say, real Michigan barbecue. And yeah. it was something that we both came up with that we said that uh, we have to make uh, a standard that, that people understand. It's a question, and then we answer it when they walk through the door. Right. Well, the, funny, the, the, the fun thing about yeah. that was is you were already doing it. You were already making this real Michigan barbecue. And when we first made the first billboard, you probably remember this, um, we we were excited because it was the first billboard that we were designing, the first billboard that you Correct. were. So the first design had way too many words on it. And Amen. the billboard company said, hey, this is too much. We're like, no, no, this is what we want. But we had the tagline that said, real Texas barbecue in Shiawassee County. Talk Correct. about a mouthful, right? Correct. But we went with it because, you know, you had learned to smoke Mm -hmm. in Texas um, and you had brought a lot of those same methods and principles to Johnny V's. Not only that, but you took every item on the menu and you tweaked it, tweaked it until it was perfect. And and uh, and you guys still continue to try and everything that you do. You want to try it and make sure that people love it and get feedback. And I think that's one of the main reasons why you guys are experiencing success, because you listen to your customers and you do things the right way. But we had talked about, so, so we were thinking about, and, and uh, our good friend, Pastor Jason, Amen. is from Texas. And anytime yeah. he sees the word Texas, he's like, ah, I've got to see if this. I'll authenticate if it's this. The, yeah, he's the Texas authenticator in yeah. the area. And, of course, he loves Johnny V's. He Amen. always takes people there. Whenever we have pastors in, he takes them to Johnny V's. But So we started talking about, well, you know, there's, there's Texas barbecue, and there's Kansas City barbecue, and there's Memphis barbecue, and there's Carolina barbecue. There's really no Michigan barbecue. Absolutely. And and we're already doing it. Mm-hmm. Let's let's do it. So I, I had said, what about real Michigan barbecue? And at first you were like, mm, I don't know. Can we really just invent a new can category? Can we live up to it? Yeah. Can we, exactly. Can we create this thing and then not just create it, but actually make it mean something? And so then you kind of went to the drawing board and you started talking about the the apple, the cherry, the hickory, that's the locally sourced. We're already doing that. And the mm-hmm. cherry, which we're already doing. And mm-hmm. this really is a Michigan product anyway. So yeah, Absolutely. let's do it. And we ran with it. And now we, we ran a marketing campaign that w- it's just billboards. Usually you see a barbecue billboard. It's got a big p- picture of ribs or something. But it just says, what is real Michigan barbecue? And then it says, exit 105 in Perry. Correct. So tell me about the response you've had to that. Are people coming off the highway because of that billboard? It's huge and absolute would be yes. And and I say it like this because if I'm in the restaurant, my number one focus and job is that we've already trained the back, mm-hmm. you know, to smoke the meats, to, to make the dishes. I mean, they know what they're doing there and they're getting really, really good at it. Uh, but for us, it comes back to what is real Michigan barbecue? It had to be a question. Mm-hmm. People challenge us every day that come <laughs> off that highway. They say, and I want to touch their table. I yeah. want to meet them at the door. Yep. Welcome to Johnny V's is what we want to say. Where are you from? So glad you're here. How'd you find us? So glad you did. And when you ask those questions, especially in our business, which is family run, locally owned and operated. We like to ask those questions so that we can find out where they're from, east and west, Canada, all the way as far as uh, the United States go. We get them out of Washington state, we get them from Oregon. I-69 is a natural corridor. We knew that when we bought that strip center and we built other restaurants there. And we said to ourselves, exit 105, halfway between Michigan, uh, it's a good, restroom break, Mm -hmm. need to grab something to eat. 
and we need to fill up. So it was natural. So what we did is we said, what is real Michigan barbecue? I can't even count the number of times that I or Michelle or my staff would say um, they saw the billboard, the campaign <laughs> that we created that I honestly don't know if I'll ever take off the board. Right. Uh, it's definitely different from the first one. It yeah. was wordy. We yeah. all thought that we knew what we wanted to <laughs> say and do and convey, but at 55 or 85 miles an hour these days, that people are driving, you gotta say something quick, quick. that they can read yeah. and then reinforce it. To say it on a billboard is one thing, to execute it inside the restaurant 100%. is another. And that's what we have to live up to. So the billboard has been successful. The campaign is something that will always probably be a part of my DNA and how we operate uh, Johnny V's. Uh, but absolute, what is real Michigan barbecue? I told you the story. Yeah. Um, and people do get off they the highway and ask. It. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, whenever I'm meeting with a new client and I'm talking about who we work with, I always start with Johnny V's because to me, like you guys are our biggest success story. Like we we love being attached to the success of your brand. And, um, and you know, but the thing is, and people say, you know, why has Johnny V's worked so well with you guys? And, and I say, you know, Good marketing is one thing. You can you can provide good marketing for a company and make it look really good, but eventually people are going to come in and try it, and then it's got to stand on its own, Amen. right? And what I think has made the Johnny V's AZ relationship work mm -hmm. so well, and why um, we've just loved seeing like Johnny V's go like this, is because we're not marketing something that's untrue. Right. I mean, we're, we're, we're marketing a product that stands up, that is what it says it is and does stand alone. And when people come in there, they not only experience great food, but they experience a great atmosphere. They experience great service, hospitality, which all makes the food taste even better. And so it's just a great, great relationship. And, you know, we try to really hold our clients to that kind of standard. Like, listen, we can promote this, but this is what the level and, and, you know, we've been able to learn a lot of things from working with each other and, and, sure. and we really, really, sure. really like the relationship. So, so let's talk about then. So you bought Johnny V's Smokehouse or so Smoking Johnny V's Barbecue Pistro, Correct. change it to Johnny V's Smokehouse, got a new logo, got a new sign, you know, new staff and some, and some aspects mm -hmm. added on to the side there. Uh, and man, when you walked into Johnny V's, I had been to the original and you know, it was okay. It wasn't a bad restaurant. It just, it was, it was struggling, you know, because Johnny had gotten sick and, you know, they were trying to make things go. And, but man, the noticeable difference when I walked in, I remember our first marketing campaign was come try us again for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. Because it wasn't just like, if you've been here before, it's not the same. Come try it again. And the recipes were the same, but just the atmosphere was different. You walked in, number one, there was lots of people in there every time I came in. But then there was this guy walking around to talking to all the tables and welcoming them and explaining the food. And that guy was you. Yeah. And man, at the beginning, you know, you as the owner were spending all of your nights there getting to know your customers, but not just excited to tell them what you had prepared for them, which people loved, but then listening to the feedback and going back to the kitchen and making those adjustments and doing it the right way. And man, what a difference, what a difference that was. Tony, it's always a journey and, and we've owned multiple restaurants over the course of time. Uh, we go back into a little bit of history of myself. We'll do that in a minute or two. But with Johnny V's, and, and I have to give credit where credit is due, they had great recipes, too. Mm -hmm. They came out of the gate just hitting it hard. Um, you know, unfortunately, Johnny did get sick, so he couldn't be on the floor, and he couldn't be in the kitchen like he once was. So I understood that being a customer, and I could see that live. And, and I felt for that situation. When I heard that they were considering maybe selling or even altogether they might have to close, I thought to myself, this isn't right. I mean, this is a great restaurant. This yeah. is a great concept. It has a lot of legs here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I feel bad that he got sick, but I'm so grateful that him and I got to come together. And when you're dealing with Johnny V's and it's a name associated with a real person, mm -hmm. you have to get them to sign off legally oh, sure. to use that name. <laughs> So Johnny was always considerate to us and always did a, a great job in my my eyes. Uh, somebody gets sick, the ball game changes a bit. 
you know, you can't be there as much as you want. Uh, we'll get into probably uh, what makes a restaurant successful or not. Mm -hmm. um, my other job was I turned restaurants around all over the country for my uh, pizza chain that I worked with and I own. But I, uh, I saw Johnny. We had those conversations. I said, can you please? Uh, I wanted him to be a big part of it at first, but he just couldn't due to his health. Yeah. So I said, could I take your dream with my vision of what I want to do, because Susan and I were going to open a smokehouse anyways. It yeah. was going to probably be in Lansing at the time. And we were just going to call it Dietrich Smokehouse, our last name. Yeah. And uh, I have four brothers, four sisters. My mother and father were all great cooks and worked in the restaurant industry and things of that nature. I have a brother who's an executive chef out in uh, you know Arizona. So we had a lot of guidance in that regard. But I wanted to take and do something when I turned 50 that I could own 100% of, that I could say, okay, this is what I'm going to do with the next chapter of my life. Yeah, I've been in pizza for 29 years <laughs> with just Hungry Howie's Pizza alone mm -hmm. and a stint with Little Caesars before that. So right out of high school and, and during college, that's what I did. And uh, I always wanted to open a smokehouse. Yeah. So we were blessed to be able to uh, talk with Johnny. The first try was, uh, it didn't happen. I had a good friend that got sick. I had to spend a lot of time with him. He said to me a year later, you really need to do this. This was always a dream of yours. Mm -hmm. You wanted to get into smoking meat. We all start off in our backyards or in our kitchens, which is what <laughs> I did. Right. I built a pavilion behind my house, gas, electric, charcoal, wood. You know, I've used them all. And we were trying to find what we wanted to do. And uh, when I found that they might have a chance to where they might close or they might have to do something different, I said, please, no. These people at Corona love this restaurant. Yeah. And this Owasso area really wants us to stay. Let us let us purchase it from you and you can be a part of it in a big way. And to this yeah. day, uh, it, it is Johnny V Smokehouse. Yeah. It'll never change the name and Johnny will always be a part of the start. Yeah, and he's been a brand ambassador. Amen. And, and Johnny Amen. Johnny's a good guy. Amen. So, okay, so you <clears throat> take over within really the first couple of months starting to just see people come in. Uh, we did some every door direct mail. We sent out menus to the whole County yes. and, and thousands and thousands. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, I, I, as when I started to realize like this guy's serious, this guy's serious about doing this thing the right way. He's not just trying. A lot of times you come across, uh, entrepreneurs, business owners that will call us and say, they start the conversation with, I need a website, but I really have a limited budget. And that's when I know like, okay, every, everybody has a limited budget, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> None of us are sitting on a pile of cash. So let's just spend millions of dollars. We're all, right. but when you start that way, I know that you're trying to shoestring it. And I understand that sometimes you have to do that, but I always tell our customers like marketing should not be an expense. It should be an investment. It Amen. should have a return. If Amen. you're doing it right, Correct. you'll it'll pay for itself. Yeah. And so let's not do it if we're not going to do it right because it just is a way, you might as well throw the, oh, advertising the yellow pages. It's mm -hmm. a waste of money, you know? Absolutely. And I hate to be that way, but the more I've learned this business, I've had to be honest with people and tell them that you're going to get out of this what you put into it. But immediately I just thought you were doing things the right way. The restaurant was going Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Forget about it. It's a 45 minute wait. People out the door, people coming sure. from all over the state of Michigan. Yeah. You read the reviews online and you got... Lapeer and Clarkston and Houghton Lake and Grand Rapids and Port Huron and Detroit and people are coming from everywhere to try this out and things are going well. And then you did your expansion, you opened your second location in Perry, which we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. And then one day, I believe it was a Saturday. Saturday, I get 12, a, 15. I get a call. Uh, I don't remember if it was from you. I think it was from you. Probably. That said that Johnny yeah. V's was on fire. Correct. And I went over there and one of the smokers had caught fire caught fire back. and you know when you guys lost pretty much everything as far as the business itself sure. you know to the point where it wasn't necessarily the right choice to rebuild so tell me about before we get into you know why you decided not to rebuild tell me what was going on with your mind when you got the call and you're seeing this thing that you've poured so much of your heart into you had spent so many hours in that building getting to know people and really building something and now you have this second location, praise God, because it's not complete. We're closed. Right. But it's like, this is happening. What's going through your mind? Well, I'll tell you that on that day, it was 1215. I was in Perry operating that restaurant. 
I get a call from one of my assistant managers, the Mayday Mayday call, mm -hmm. the restaurant's on fire. You know, your concern as an owner is, are is everyone out? All, right. all the customers out? Are all the employees out? Have you called the fire department? Yes. Did you call the police? Yes. Okay, then are they there? Yes. Then I need you to back away as far as you can. Let them do what they do. Right. I will be there as quickly as I can. Hang up. Drive about 15, 20 minutes on the back roads, not speeding because that won't help anything. <laughs> yeah. But praying to God the whole way that everyone stays safe, that we can get this somehow under control. And God, you're always in control, so I'm just going to go with this. Yeah. Lots of things happen in our lives that we have absolutely no 100%. control over that come our way. It's when you're prepared through your faith that you can just give it to the Lord, set it at his footsteps, and say, it is what it is. I will take it from here. Show me the way. Yeah. And that's us. Yeah. I get there, it's on fire, there's people crying, there's customers coming from all over, because Johnny V's is no longer just a restaurant, it's an institution at yeah. this point in yeah. time. For this community, this small community, they are coming north, south, east, and west at this time from an hour, hour and a half away. Anyone comes off the highway, you know, they can come from anywhere. But um, having my faith in the fact that I try to do things decent and in order, knew right away that I had insurance, knew right away that we would be okay. Thank you, dear Lord, that nobody has been hurt so far. And then for the next five or six hours, you're watching it burn. But once again, firefighters doing a great job, the police are doing a great job, the community's coming out in droves. It's literally people standing in every direction photographing on these phones that we have today. Right. And of course, we did a lot of that too. Uh, it was devastating in the fact that we're losing something that we put so much time in. We go back just a little bit. Right after I purchased it, I put the first 100 days in from open to close. Only two days off to take a good friend that was dying to the UP, which was a request. Mm -hmm. Coming back to work those, and then one day off once in a while after that. Because that's the kind of energy you have to put into something that you invest in, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then when you have a dream to do something with it. So you will lead, you will guide, you will inspire your people around you to do what they need to do when you show them the way. Mm -hmm. So we did that. But watching that fire live, you know, you know I even get teared up today, right mm -hmm. now. I, I understand it. It's hard. But I also understand that I had no control over it, that that's why we call them accidents. Yeah. My only concern was, thank you, dear Lord, there were 75 guests in that lobby, that restaurant, that dining room, that afternoon at 12.15. There were eight or nine employees working the restaurant. Not one of them got hurt. I can replace a kitchen, I can yeah. replace a building, I can build another business. What I can't do is replace a life. Right. You know, and somebody, so I felt blessed right away that that was under control. No fun watching something burn that you're building and that you're, you know, investing a lot of time, energy, and money into. But knowing that you're covered yeah. and that you've done business the right way gives you that peace of mind that, you know, it is what it is. And okay. let's go to the next step. Yeah. So <clears throat> the question that I'm sure yeah. you've gotten a bazillion times yeah. and probably still continue to get to this day is, yeah. um, now, again, you had Perry, and Perry was up and running, and yeah. Perry was going, but there were still a lot of Corona folks, the sure. Owasso folks that had never come to the Perry location because they had to the one here. Day. And it's a little bit of a mm -hmm. different concept. Sure. You know, uh, Johnny V Smokehouse was a full service restaurant Absolutely. with a bar and uh, wait staff, wait staff, and in service, exactly. different menu. And, and Johnny V's in Perry was this kind of fine, fast, casual concept that you order at the counter, still great service, same great food, a little bit different atmosphere at that time, limited seating. Um, and so people hadn't made the journey yet. And so the question you kept getting and probably still get is why not rebuild in Corona? Well, I'll have to go to Perry first and let you know that I built that restaurant for a totally different reason. Mm -hmm. It was a fine, fast, casual to take pressure off of Corona. Right. That, that location, Johnny V Smokehouse. And we built that because we touch every table when we're in the restaurant. We find out where these customers are coming from. A lot of them were coming from the south and the west. 
knowing that, knowing that we already owned a business in Perry that we were going to convert into retail space, I went home one night and told Susan, I said, you know what? I think I want to do a smaller version of Johnny V's, make it all about the food, and see how that concept works. Mm -hmm. Something I've always wanted to do. So when I went to Perry, I designed that building three different ways with my architect, almost to nauseam, because I had to have a pickup window. Yeah. Knowing from my background in pizzas and, you know, Perry Hungry Howies and drive up windows and coming off an exit that's a bedroom community to north, south, east, and west. Um, I thought this was the wave of the future. Didn't yeah. know everything, but I <laughs> thought that's something that was crucial yeah. in order to build that. So I thought different concept, same food as you said, but it has to be all about the food. We'll have our Southern hospitality twist on it and we'll take care of people. I take all of my best practices, all of them from Chick-fil-A. Yeah. The Truett Kathy family, no longer with us, but the family, Dan and the others that are there. Uh, it's best practices. It's a good playbook to look at when you're in that fine, fast, casual segment. Mm -hmm. And I watch what they do. I don't have to invent everything. I can learn a lot by listening and watching what other people are doing. Right. And I saw that they were real successful with that concept. Their very first restaurant, too, was a full-scale restaurant that's open till this day. Uh, I think it's called the Delph, but it, uh, it's in Georgia was full scale sit down. Every single restaurant they built after that to this day <laughs> was what you see in these towns of maybe Lansing yeah. or, you know, yeah. other parts of Michigan or all over the country actually. Yeah. So they ask us why not Corona? Well, we didn't own the building. We didn't own the property. I tried to buy it from day one, but the people that owned it just didn't want to sell it. Um, you know, that happens. That's business. Yeah, I sure. understood why they did that. I often feared in the back of my head that one day we might outgrow this space because if ever any, anyone ever watched the evolution of what we did in Corona, adding on the vestibule, taking over the back part of the patio, converting it to a red jacket room, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get as much seating as we could because it's good to be busy, but you don't ever want to leave people at the door for 45 minutes or an hour. Right. Uh, they come a long way. You want to take care of them. So, uh, when those guys decided, the owners of the property and the building, that they were no longer going to rebuild, I didn't have a choice. I just move on, and I, I decide what I need to do. We'll get into this in a little bit, I'm sure, but thank God, because COVID was right around the corner, and I yeah. knew nothing about it. I didn't right. know that I was going to have to live and die off that drive-up window. Right and things of that nature. So yeah. will we ever build in this area again? I never like to say never. But right now, it's the last thing on my list of priorities. We're mm -hmm. trying to get through a pandemic. Right. Pe some people understand, most people, 99% of those people understand that this is a business. This is our decision, my family's decision, my mm -hmm. company's decision to make. Um, if God opens the doors, we walk through them. Yeah. If doors get shut, which they have, then we don't. Right. I learned that a long time ago. Right. Not good to kick open doors. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's good. That's a good, uh, a good answer and a good perspective. And, uh, you know, you had to do the things that make the most sense, but I Amen. think it goes back to that philosophy is let's do the right thing. Absolutely. And that's what you've continued to do. But the challenge I know for you, and I know we talked about this was you bought a restaurant. It was struggling because of uh, circumstances out of their control. Right. We're able to turn things around relatively quickly to the point where you were able to expand correct and add on you know what you added what 50 seats 70 yep. to the to the existing restaurant are to we the, talking, talking Corona? Corona. Yep. yeah oh yeah yep added another 50 seats with the red jacket room mm -hmm. um had really had things humming there uh some of the staff members were household names people Absolutely. people came because they knew who those people were and yeah Let's say things. hi to Hooch out there. Uh, Hooch, Our yep. bartender. I, I saw Hooch. One. I saw Hooch recently. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we love him. And then there was plans and talks, uh, pretty serious talks about a third location. Sure. Uh, perhaps in the Lansing area or something. Right. I've been scouting different things, mm -hmm. and and so you had you know all these things were kind of going, and then you know this fire happened, and it just changed everything. And then as we're going to talk about later in the show. COVID happened and just mm -hmm. kind of changed the plans. Sure. Um, so what do you want people to know today about Johnny V's? 
You can hint towards some future plans if you'd sure. like. But what do you want people to know right now about Johnny V's and Perry today? What you loved about Corona is everything that we're still in Perry exit 105. Mm -hmm. And it's real simple. My life hasn't changed. My wife, my family, my employees, you know, a shout out to Michelle, who's been with me for almost 19 years. Michelle's and, awesome. And Kate is our cook. My son Jordan's there. Madeline, Sophia, my kids are there working in it. Um, you know, Christina's been there, being they call her, since day one. And yeah. we have others. And yeah. I, I, My daughter I, worked there this summer, and she loved it. Oh, we, and we loved having her, of yeah. course. So, um, you know, with that restaurant in itself... It's all about the food. The menu cannot be as big as it is or was in Corona. Never mm -hmm. meant to be that way. I didn't design the kitchen that way. Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't design the the uh, dining room that way. We just yeah. added on. We're able to open after COVID. Yep. I think it looks beautiful. It looks People amazing. Are like 100 it. seats, right? Uh, yeah, 100 seats on that side. Uh, rave reviews, but it isn't uh, a full service restaurant. You come up to the counter, you place your order, you can even get beer and wine. Uh, we're not a bar, therefore I don't use the liquor license. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I want is, I don't want a veto vote. Right. I don't want people in a group of four to say, I love Johnny V's, I love the food, but I'm not gonna go there because I can't get a cold beer, which beer and barbecue, for whatever reason, go together. Huh. And the ladies like their wine or cider, sometimes men too, of course. But um, we have that. Then you go have a seat. We run it out to you. Tony, during COVID, we have been so busy. It's unbelievable. And that's a good thing. I'm not complaining about it. Yeah. It's, you know, we're trying to deal with the workforce or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. But um, the takeaways from Perry is that we have the menu set up the way that we need to set it up to get through these most difficult times. We still do not and are not allowed to put the sauces on the table per the health department. Uh, we used to have heated sauces. We can't do things that have a lot of hands touching. It's just the way it is. And then with the labor shortage, you know, and the number of people that you can have or, or can have uh, touching things, uh, we're doing the best we can. We yeah. absolutely are. Uh, of course, we're sanitizing and washing hands and wearing gloves and sanitizers everywhere, uh, doing the health checks, making sure that if someone's sick, they don't come to work. And we've always been about that, though. Yeah. We've no. never wanted employees coming to work Well, we sick. talked about that, like, you know, the protocols that were kind of put in place when you guys were originally allowed to reopen and then yeah. they close you again. But uh -huh. it was like, we've been doing this stuff since the beginning. I mean, exactly. cleanliness was like, well the Well-run restaurants just do that. Yeah. You are building a restaurant and you're building a business and you want to be in business for years to come. Right. And so you have to do the right thing and you have to protect your employees, you have to protect the customers. That's just a good way of doing business. Those are best business practices. Uh, we, we've always had those. Yeah. It's been a little more strict lately, but that's okay. We're all getting through it. The ones that want to get through it are getting through it. Yeah. Not saying it's easy, but we're getting through it. And we are all looking at the light at the end of the tunnel sure. uh, for this to be over. And the lights, we don't want to be another train coming at us. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, any, any kind of future plans that you guys have that you're working on right now or just kind of waiting to see how things turn out with the it's pandemic? It's a good question because every night I'm in the building and I'm touching the tables, talking to the customers. Inevitably, throughout those conversations, will you ever build back? Will you ever continue on? I thought you were going to be on restaurant three or four. I said, let's not forget we're in a pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're trying to pull back. It's called having discernment. It's called being a little more conservative in these you know, trying times. Uh, we have a new administration. you got to know what direction it's going. Uh, you know, the state and, and what the local government does and the state government does to, uh, to our business. So we have taken a, a, a slowdown approach, and we're watching and seeing. I always wanted to build more restaurants, Johnny V's. I just don't know where they're going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good answer. I mean, just, you know, to be determined, right? Correct. To be determined. Yep. Absolutely. So, you know, I would just say, uh, for those of you who followed us, have been following us and who listen to our podcast, like if you're in Michigan, mid-Michigan area, make the trip to Johnny V's. It is worth it. 
everybody loves good barbecue, but this is great barbecue. Uh, they have five different sauces to choose from. Actually, they just added an Alabama We're up white to sauce. Seven. seven sauces yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, and of course, everything's smoked on site, fresh. They have the brisket, they have the chicken, they have the pork, they have the ribs. And uh, everything is just fantastic. You will not be disappointed. And then the sides are incredible. Uh, and so you know, the list goes on. So um, let's talk a little bit about your journey. Sure. Okay. And we won't spend a ton of time on this, but mm-hmm. kind of to get people to understand like how you ended up becoming a barbecue man. Uh, and I know you're more than that, but you know how you ended up doing this. So where were you born and raised? Talk a little bit about your upbringing. Because easy, I know it's a unique by Easy itself. enough. And I truly appreciate that. Um, Come from four brothers and four sisters in a big family of nine, plus mom and dad, 11. So uh, we grew up relatively poor in northern Michigan. Mm-hmm. So uh, we like we like to use everything. We, we believe that uh, hard work is the way if you, if you can't educate yourself uh, through education and things like that. So born in Ionia, Michigan, but quickly moved to the Traverse City region where my grandparents and my parents were from. Uh, that is just a foodie mecca, yeah. just the way it is. It's always been that way. Yeah. But uh, so got a lot of experience with that. My mother, my father, my brothers and sisters, we all had to cook. You know, you have a big family like that. Mom and dad are both working. You don't get the option. It's next man up and let's, what are we eating tonight and things right. like that. So, but we ate a lot of wild game. Uh, we, you know, picked from the farms. Uh, I've had a job since the second grade. Wow. <laughs> Second grade, Mancelona, Michigan. I was sweeping floors for a five and dime out of Lang's. Yeah. It's called Mr. Lang. And uh, he got me into the restaurant business in a uh, uh, maybe a different kind of way. And that was I would sweep the floors in the morning, take care of his uh, five and dime store. He was well into his 80s even then. Uh, and then uh, he would send me off the lunch every day. And that was one of my rewards was if I worked for him, he would buy me lunch every day. So uh, I would come back. I think he just maybe wanted companionship too, but uh, I took it seriously. So uh, going from Mr. Lang's to having paper routes and all those things you hear about that young men would do, shoveling snow, raking leaves, things that now are businesses that people do, and and they do it really well, by the way. But... uh, at 19 years old, I was at, uh, and then we moved to Marquette, let's say that. We went from Traverse City, Lake Michigan, to Lake Superior, Marquette, in the seventh grade. Um, I graduated from Marquette High School. I went to school at Northern. Um, we have a place up there to this day that we go to. Uh, my son and I and our family and friends were big hunters, so it's bear, deer, turkey, yeah. whatever. So we spent a lot of time up there. But um, coming and going to school, I was actually, my first year and a half was pre-med. I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. I didn't know Uh, that. Yep. So I wanted to do something like that. Uh, Studied all the courses I could, but then quickly realized that I went to work for a man that just opened up a Little Caesars pizza franchise in Marquette, Michigan. None of us knew what it was in the UP. That was a Detroit thing. Right. So he opens this restaurant. He's busy. I'm a delivery driver. I'm 18 years old in my freshman year of college, but this guy's driving around in what they call a Lamborghini Countach. <laughs> I didn't even know what that looked. That was. It looked like a spaceship. Well, he was on his fourth store. Little to my uh, knowledge that uh, I would get the bug of working in restaurants and running restaurants. I saw the things that this guy was doing. Four stores. By 19 years old, I was supervising 10 restaurants. Oh, wow. So 19 years old, I'm supervising Little Caesars through the UP, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And it wasn't because I had all the experience in the world, but it was hard to outwork me kind of thing. Yeah. And this guy sure liked somebody that could work hard and work long hours and things like that. And I was a sponge. I was um, on my own when I went to college, so I had to pay all my own bills, things like that. So I did not have uh, the mother, the father, a big family. You know, We didn't have the finances, so I was doing it all. I saw what was going on there. I thought, maybe I can do this. So I dropped out of college worked at Little Caesars, ran about six years at that. Um, all my managers and everybody were way older than I was, so that was that was a little bit of a struggle. Mm-hmm. But uh, work ethic taught me that you can be um, a hard worker, do all the things that you need to do. 
I always believed in education though. I always believe that you yeah. s- you know, you can be self-taught mm-hmm. to this day. I love to, to read as much as I can, especially trade magazines or publications that do with my businesses and, uh, the occasional book that will come through that will, you know, just happen to hit where I've been and what mm-hmm. I'm trying to do. Yeah. I like autobiographies. I'm not much into, you know, hypotheticals and people right. that, you know, write about something that maybe they do or do not know about. I like to watch how a person's taken a journey and I, I try yeah. to learn from that when I can. So Marquette working there, going back to school, leaving that little Caesars. And then a friend of mine and I were always, our dream was to open a, a pizza restaurant, a little Caesars probably mm-hmm. found out at that time that there was a moratorium built on little Caesars. Mike Gillich didn't want any new franchisees. We both agreed. We knew of this little pizza place that we remember from downstate that was called hungry Howie's pizza. And uh, we opened our first one. A friend of mine had one in Traverse City. I went to be a delivery driver just to learn the business. After the third day, he wanted me to manage the restaurant. He knew I had experience. I took that. We ended up buying that restaurant, built another one in Mount Pleasant. I said, why would God take me from Traverse City, Michigan, (laughs) all the way to Mount Pleasant, which I considered at the time a dust bowl because I was used to growing up around water. And it's because I met my wife, Susan. Yeah. That was the journey I needed there. So I went yep. from um, you know, running Hungry Howie's, multiple, worked at the corporate level. They came and found me. Uh, I did a lot of years in operations. And then uh, my last stint, and I was there at three different times, they, they come and got me. Uh, I was in marketing. Mm-hmm. So I love marketing. Yeah. And, and that's something you and I definitely have a lot in common. For sure. So, uh, but you know, I have a wife, Susan, uh, we just celebrated 25 great years. Uh, my son, Jordan's 23. My daughter, Madeline's going, uh, on 21, uh, at the end of next month. Sophia just started her freshman year at Grand Valley state. She just turned 18. So having that great family structure and what we wanted, uh, has always been good. I don't have my wife stand behind me. She stands alongside me yep. and I could never have this journey without that. So, here we are. We live outside of uh, Owasso on some acreage, and uh, I honestly think I could live anywhere probably right about now. I love Michigan. Yeah. I'll visit, and I'll have maybe a place someplace warm to go visit someday, that kind of thing. But uh, I think the Midwest is the heart and soul, the heartbeat of this nation. Yeah. They call them flyover states for a reason, because yeah. you got the East Coast and the West Coast, but don't yeah. count us out. No, it's the heartland. Yeah, amen. It's the heartland. Well, so well, thank you for sharing that journey with us. I mean, I actually learned some things that I didn't know, um, but it's interesting. You know, we've talked a lot with our guests about, you know, their journey and the journey of an entrepreneur. And, you know, so many young people today, they look on social media and they see their friends doing this or that. They see all, everyone's best day. And so they judge themselves and think they're not, you know, where they should be or they're not. Uh, it breaks as, far my along, heart. as far along as they mm-hmm. should be. And they judge themselves that way. Mm-hmm. And I always tell young people, I say, listen, number one, don't compare yourself to other people. It's okay to gain inspiration from mm-hmm. what somebody else has done, but you're Excellent. not them. And, you know, the next guy that tries to make the next Johnny V's is going to have a completely different journey sure. than you have. And mm-hmm. so it's not going to be the same, even if they right. try to emulate it. And so go on your own path, gain inspiration from people that you look up to and learn from other people's mistakes and failures. All those things are great. But when you start judging yourself based on the success or the failures of those people around you, then you're going to miss out on your journey and your blessings. And I just talked with this about our last episode about, uh, I think the key for anybody that's going to be an entrepreneur or anyone that's going to go into some type of a uh, start a business the first thing you have to do is you have to determine what does success look like to you because it's different for everybody. Amen. And if you know what you're chasing in terms of success, whether that be money, whether that be financial security, whether that be the future, whether that be time, whether that be freedom, whether that be more family, whatever, you will not know you've achieved success if you haven't defined what it is. Mm-hmm. And if you're looking at someone else's success and making that yours, that's going to ruin the journey also. Absolutely. Because the journey can be fun. The journey does not come without hard work and without failures and without setbacks and without Absolutely. all of those things. But it can be a lot of fun if you know what you're going after and you keep that thing in front of you. If you mm-hmm. go in my office, I have a big canvas that says, remember why you started. And I look at that every day. Amen. And it's a reminder to me that 
there was a specific reason I got into this mm-hmm. and there's a specific thing that I wanted out of this. And as long as it's giving me that, it's good. But as soon as I start making it about something else, then it becomes this thing that I dread and I don't enjoy. It becomes work. It becomes work. And who wants to work, right? <laughs> and so, Find a yeah, so, so th- yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that journey with us. I, I know that that will be an encouragement and an inspiration to other people. And I know that... You know, through that journey, you ended up at one point. You had nine hungry howies, I believe. Yeah, um, I, I've been up to fifteen up at to one 15, time. Yeah, I built them one at a time while I was working under the umbrella of working at the corporate office. Yeah. So I would build one. I would buy three. I would build one. I'd buy three more. Things like that. Yeah. To where, um, I got to the point to where at fifty, I still love hungry howies. It's still a big part of my portfolio or what we do. And my kids, maybe or maybe not, one day. If not, I give great opportunities to the Brads and the Michelles yeah. of the world, uh, the people that've been with me the longest. I vest them. I yeah. think that's very important. Hundred percent. But uh, yeah, yeah, good. And so basically, and you alluded to this earlier, but. Um, you and your wife had always talked about the smokehouse mm-hmm. and then you end up having the opportunity to buy your wife's favorite restaurant, yep. which is just such a cool story. Mm-hmm. So there's a statistic out there and you know, who knows how accurate it is, but basically it says that 80% of entrepreneurs fail. Yep. 80 plus percent. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that is? And I know there's a million reasons, but I consider that part of the journey too. Okay, because my wife and I and what we've done over the years, once again, find a strong person, whoever that is that you're going to spend your life with. Uh, You know, it took me a long time. My older brothers would always say, you're looking too hard. I said, no, I'm looking for the right one. Yeah. So when you find the right one, God will bless you in, in a lot of different ways. But that journey of entrepreneurship and being willing to not worry about failing, I mean, we have all the great inventors in the world. We're so blessed in the United States to uh, whether it's uh, you know uh, Bell or or uh, even when you hear about Steve Jobs and starting Apple and things like that. That these guys failed a lot. Yeah. Be okay with that. That's yep. part of the journey too. Part of the journey. That's how you learn so much. But you know, you got to learn from it though. Yeah. And I did. Yes. I didn't have all the book smarts in the world. I never finished college, by the way. I don't Me know neither. if I finished that journey. But uh, I knew that I'd be okay. I always work hard. I try to always do the right thing. Um, I believe in myself, number one, and first mm-hmm. and foremost. Uh, it, you you got to have confidence. It doesn't mean you have you to do. have arrogance. Right. That's so confidence and these young people that you speak of that in the social digital media world in which we live, it breaks my heart. I'm not on Facebook till this day. I run Facebook for my businesses, mm-hmm. but I personally have not made that commitment. I'm actually hoping that I can go to my deathbed and never joining <laughs> Facebook. And it hasn't worked out for some people, by yeah, the way, anyways. Yeah. You're better off. Yeah, yeah they're banning everybody these yeah. days for their right. opinions. If anyone knows me at all, they'll know I'm not a big fan of what other people think. Yeah, It doesn't mean that I don't like opinions, but remember, those are opinions. Right. When somebody wants to come up to me, and I don't even use the phrase of constructive criticism anymore. Mm-hmm. I think you're, you're actually maybe doing yourself a service and not the other person that you're dealing with. I call it constructive critiquing because mm-hmm. I'm here to help you become better. Right. I know that if you come work for us, this may only be a step in this journey of your life. So we take a lot of pride in the training of mm-hmm. these youth that we have that come work for us mm-hmm. to say, you know, we start them off at 15 years old in some cases. And uh, it's a great thing. I started off really young working, didn't have a choice and, and it worked out for me and I thought it was good. We need to do a better job in our industry of restaurants, of showing people that you can do well and make a living at this if right. you so choose. A lot of steps in between to where you might level off and say, this is good enough for me. I have lots of those people that work in our organization, and I appreciate every single one of them. Tony, I'll never walk into one of my restaurants, anyone who knows us, and not knuckle bump every single employee to start yeah. the day. I used to shake hands. they tell us that's not good anymore. So <laughs> I try to knuckle. No, now they say sneeze into your elbow and then bump elbows. <laughs> I'll do whatever I want when I want as much as I want. Right, but right. it goes like this. I'll walk to the dishwasher and say hi to Lydia tonight. Yeah, She's 15 years old or she's 16 years old or 17. It's instrumental. Yeah, My wife and I, and the way I run a business is a little old fashioned. Like when people say, when you use the words, my pleasure, or you welcome people in, nobody else is doing that. Mm-hmm. Or if they are, it's not enough. Mm-hmm. 
we, we can all be good to each other. We sure. don't have to agree all the time. We don't, yeah. Whether you're far right, far left, or in the middle, uh, we need to get along. We still live in the greatest country in the world. We still have uh, the privileges. You know, we're here for a reason. Uh, right. But but when it comes to business, I just think that entrepreneurial, uh, the people that are trying to do something with their life, they have to believe. But they have to believe that they're going to have to work hard too. Yeah. It just doesn't come naturally unless no. mom and dad or someone's going to give you all this boatload of money like you referred to earlier. Right. Um, but you can still make something For you sure. know, happen and make something of yourself easily in this business. Yeah, I like a quote by Michael Jordan that says, I've never lost. I've either won or I've uh, learned. Yeah. And Amen. I always tell people failure that. isn't failure unless it's final, meaning yeah. you just Amen. quit. I'm done. Yeah. So if it's part of the journey and it's part of the setbacks, you know, even the Bible says get knocked down seven times, get back up again, you know, get up eight. So, you know, I think, I think that's part of it. And, you know, I think people, they quit too early. Mm -hmm. Some people went in it without the right plan Mm -hmm. or didn't Mm -hmm. set themselves up for success, but that doesn't mean it's failure because it's all part of the learning process. If you're committed to it and again, define success, that's a key important In, in my, in my world, Knowing what you're working towards is Amen. so key Amen. because then you can quantify if you're getting there. Yeah. But if you're working towards somebody else's de- definition of success, then mm-hmm. it's always going to be this endless pursuit that you're never going to find. So figure out what is, I mean, I have a mission statement for my life. Mm-hmm. You know, some people have a mission statement for their business and we have that as well. But the mission statement for my life is to be happy and to spend as many days as possible doing the things that I love. So if I know that's what I want out yeah. of life, then I know I'm going to order my business and my things that are important around how do I get there Amen. as much as possible. We could talk about our journey Amen. all day and we do yeah. all the time. Every time we have a meeting, it's a three hour <laughs> event and we have food and it's yeah. wonderful. We only schedule um, an hour and a half, but we end up going three. So that's right. a good thing. So I'm going to send you a text right now. Yeah. Uh, we have this segment called explain that post. And since you don't have social media, I couldn't do a deep dive on your social media and find something incriminating. That's what you but did. I found some stuff on Johnny V's, yeah. which I know we've helped create. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would thought, you know, what the purpose of this segment is to give the post more context. Sure. So I thought, you know, for those of who, for those listening who maybe haven't been to Johnny V's or don't know what these things are, you and I do. Sure. You can maybe give them some more context. So the first one, and our audience can see this is just a box with your logo and it says Jamie free lunch item from 11:30 to 1 p.m. What is this all about? Well, I mean in the marketing world it's about getting people through the door. Right. But uh, we have fun with that too. But we like to let our customers have fun. They look for their name. Their name is special to them and unique and yep. unique to them only. And believe me, when we don't use those unique names, we hear about, <laughs> we it, hear too. about it. But that's a good thing. But um, the name game is such that we can get somebody to come in, maybe or maybe not bring a friend. It doesn't matter to us. But to feel special for that day. It's almost everyone was doing the birthday post. Yeah. You know, uh, happy birthday and you get something free, that kind of thing. We wanted to relegate it to a name, come in. We all know the game inside the building as far as the name, who is it going to be? Oh, it's Jamie this Friday. Let's be prepared to say hi to a lot of Jamies and let's yeah. have fun with that. And, and we're glad you're there. Yeah, you don't have to buy anything. Yeah, I mean we win customers over one at a time, yeah. and we have a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee at Johnny V's that if it's not what you like, let us make you something else. Mm-hmm. Or if we didn't earn your money today, we don't want it. Yeah, yeah. And so basically, people follow, mm-hmm. and if every Friday, I mean, yeah. we, we post it on a Monday to let them know for that week sure. that if you know of a Jamie or someone, let them know. someone that has a variation yeah. of the name Jamie, sure. you know, yeah. uh, send them in. And basically they show up between 11.30 and 1.30, 11.30 yeah. and 1, and they get a free sandwich yeah. or burger just for being their name that day. And yeah. people love it. And those get a ton of engagement and response. Amen. And, uh, you know, people like so it. To create the buzz. Yeah. And it could be, in this case, it could be Jameson. Yeah. Come on in. Come we'll on love today. to have you. Absolutely. Yep. All right, the next one is a popular post that we do, these yep. this or that. Yes. And where we ask people to decide what do you pref- what what's your favorite? And this one is brisket, which is mm-hmm. amazing, or the ribs, which are also right. amazing. So we want to hear from the barbecue man. Okay. If you had to choose one or the other, you can't pick both. You had to choose at Johnny V's, I'm gonna go for the ribs or the brisket. How do you choose? I gotta give you a little story behind it. 
Ribs come out of St. Louis. That's the influence we use. Brisket, burgers, burn ends out of Texas. Went there, learned mm-hmm. how to smoke them. And North and South Carolina would be for your chicken and your porks and things like that. So when you come into the restaurant and you see Kevin Dietrich, nine chances out of 10, he has a shirt on that says body by bacon. <laughs> the reason I say that and the reason I made those shirts, which uh-huh. you helped me with, thank you, by the way, yeah. is because all of our customers would ask that question. They would say to me, well, you're the owner. What would you order? I'd say, look at me. This is body by bacon. I eat everything. (laughs) And what I meant by that was, is that we make everything fresh. We rub everything hours in advance. We smoke it the right way. We only use the best ingredients. Um, So it, it will be hard for me because to me, it's what am I in the mood for that day? Right. But if you're going to force me to pick between these two. Just today. Just today, I'm going to say the ribs. The baby back ribs are brought in, of course, fresh. The thickest, meatiest ribs you'll find anywhere. I'm not telling you that. Look at the reviews. That's what the customers say. And I love to sample. And when I sample, it's going to be brisket or burn ends. But. Tomorrow you'll ask me, I might say brisket. Yeah. Uh, well, they're both amazing. Yeah. I give both two Appreciate thumbs up. The ribs. But we want to know what you think. Yes. Tell yeah. us what you think. Follow Johnny V's yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, anywhere you can find them, and tell us what you think. Um, but the brisket uh, is just, and it has that nice snap that pulls yeah. apart when you eat it. You can taste the smoke. Uh, you can taste the rub. And then the ribs literally do fall off the bone. Absolutely. I mean, you can pull the, pull the bone out with almost no effort. So yeah. they're fantastic. So, and by the way, I don't know if you know this, but Johnny V's is the only place on the planet that I'll eat ribs Ooh. because my wife always used to order ribs. On our honeymoon, her first meal was a full rack of ribs. I'm like, oh, okay. When we were dating, you wow. didn't eat a full rack of ribs. <laughs> yeah. Now that you got me, I know. Yeah. But it was also awesome. But I was like, man, ribs is just so much work. It's messy and you got to sit there and I got to tell apart. you a little story. But Johnny V's, I'll eat, yeah, I'll eat them at Johnny V's because number one, they're delicious, yeah. but they just are so easy to eat. With that being said, in that context, I never used to eat ribs or steak out. I just, I stopped. I failed. I'm just like, they're not living up. I, you know, we meet so many customers. Today, it's it's the thing to do, and that's smoke or uh, barbecue. There's a difference between a smokehouse and a barbecue joint, too, mm-hmm. by the way. Mm-hmm. And we try to be a, a, a true, back in the day, we used to say it all the time, a true Texas smokehouse. Mm-hmm. That means you have to do everything well. Right. You know, you go to Austin, Texas, there'll be a hundred barbecue smokehouses on mm-hmm. every corner. You don't learn to do that well, they'll run you out of town. Oh yeah. So that's where we went. We wanted to make sure that we could do the game and bring it back to Michigan. And you know, we understand we're not for everyone. Everyone has a certain way of eating a rib, a chicken wing, or their burger, their favorite steak. But I, along with you, stopped eating out and I started making my own. So when you come into Johnny V's, you're getting every single dish as if my wife and my kids, when we travel, would want to have and enjoy the experience. So when you're coming off the highway, that's the kind of experience we want to enjoy when we go out to eat. And it doesn't always happen, you know that. And especially during COVID, we're asking for grace, we're asking for patience, knowing that behind the scenes, we're working very hard every single day to give you the best food at at the best price we can. I never compromise the integrity of my food to meet a price point. That's just not part of our our business plan. But we wanna make sure that you feel welcome when you walk in. I tell my employees when we're training them, I say, make that like you would your mom. I don't like my mom. Okay, sorry about that. All right, make it like you'd make it for your grandma or your grandpa then. And everyone seems to love their grandma and grandpa. And when we're youthful, uh, we we like to challenge our parents from time to time. So I wanna conclude our episode uh, and of course, we could talk for hours, but you know we have an audience, so we want to make sure we're valuing their time as well. Correct. But um, we want to talk a little bit about the pandemic because we are still, by some measures, in the pandemic, and obviously, 2020 has affected everybody in a certain kind of way. But the restaurant industry, in particular, in Michigan here, was one of the last to reopen, and then only got to be open at limited capacity, and then got shut back down, and then reopened, and then with limited capacity and limited restriction, and it still continues to go on. And our health department here has made it a challenge. Uh, You know, first the governor with her executive orders, and then the health department now with their executive, or their, I guess their orders, I'm not sure what they're called, but right. they made it a challenge. Right. And of course, the restaurants have always had to go along with what the health department's asking. And so, um, 
you know, I know that Johnny V's was not deemed an essential business. In other words, you were allowed to stay open, but for drive through only. But what was the reaction at the beginning that you were getting from your customers when they couldn't come in? You would, you were still building your uh, expansion at that time, right? Right. You had planned right. to open it like in April, mm-hmm. and then March of 2020 hit. Yeah. So just we stopped progress on that Absolutely. for a while. Yeah. But because you had some forethought, yeah, you had that drive-through window, which ended up being. You know, the savior, the lifeline, yeah, right. the, the savior. Mm-hmm. Well, how did your customers react that they couldn't come in? Well, I mean, depends on which side of the fence you're on, because yeah. some people believe this is the right thing to do, others don't. Um, we have to follow the guidelines. We're in business, state of Michigan. We have licenses, act state, things of that nature, um, and we are just like I said. We're always going to try to do the right thing. So I'm always going to try to go along when we absolutely can, and we feel that we have the ability to do that. So when we shut down the dining room, when we shut down the uh, in-store dining or the ability to walk up to the front counter and just service out of a drive-up window, we were blessed. A lot of my friends in this industry, it's a brotherhood, were not so fortunate. Old Johnny V's in Corona probably would have never made it. We would have had been shut down the whole time. That was all a fine dining or bar sit down, mm-hmm. wait staff atmosphere to where um, Perry was able to work and function through the drive up. Yeah, It was different. It was something that all of us, I never have a problem with uh, doing something if everyone is going in the same direction and right. everyone is deemed doing it. I would relate Level that to minim, minimum yeah. wage, same thing. You want to go to $15 an hour? We'll go to $15 an hour. That's not a problem if everybody else is doing it too, level playing field. Uh, But this is what $15 an hour looks like, guys. It's, you know, your burger just went up, your brisket just went up, your ribs just went up, things like that. And just so everyone knows, everyone at Johnny V's makes over $15 an hour minimum. So our point is, is that uh, the drive up window saved us and we were able to do it and we were busy. Honestly, we got busier and busier because we decided to stay open. We didn't close our doors. We didn't have to close our doors. And if we wouldn't have had that drive up window, I think we'd be talking a whole different story. Sure, sure. Well, who would have known that that foresight and it was it was a blessing that I had no idea. Yeah, and you never know what God is doing. I mean, you Amen. never want to say Amen. that, you know, the building burnt down for a good reason, but yeah. the fact yeah. that that wasn't uh, there and the fact that you had this drive through window all at the same time, it certainly helped through that time yeah. more than it would have had you not. So yeah. you can always look back and say, God is good. Yeah, hey, God is good. Yeah. He knows how to take care of us, yeah. even then, yeah, absolutely. even when we can't see his perspective. Absolutely. Um, so what was something that, you know, I always like to get from entrepreneurs, what's something creative and innovative? And I know some things you did, but share with our audience some creative or innovative things you did to stay in touch with those customers who love Johnny V's and how you stayed in contact with them. Even though I'm not a big fan of Facebook and all of those, I love the technology and how it works in a business. So for us to have AZ running our platforms of social digital media, um, you guys helped us out tremendously with making sure that we still got the message out, that we were still open, that we were still current, that we were still relevant, Mm -hmm. that uh, yes, we did have to skinny down the menu and, and maybe you could only see us through the window, but it was a lot better than being closed. But realistically, um, you cut back on your marketing mm-hmm. uh, at those times because mm-hmm. it becomes skin and bones at that time. You're trying to survive. Mm-hmm. And that's what we saw in Michigan for sure is that everyone went into a survival mode. Mm-hmm. Luckily, faithfully, we stayed true that uh, our customers, we have some of the best customers around. Mm-hmm. And they understood what we were up against. Uh, they started tipping, even though we had no tipping policy. <laughs> uh, they said, and we said, no, we, we don't accept tips. They said, we want you to get through this. We want you to stay around. Uh, and so we understood that. And, and you don't want to insult people over and over and over again. Sure. So we kind of fa- fell for it and said, okay, uh, let's see what we can do. And then we'll help out our employees too and make sure that we can give back to the community. But I still have to say the drive up window is, is what made us, uh, you know, able to stay open. Yeah. So what today as people come in now, people are allowed to come in and dine in the new, we did, you did open the, 
a new hundred yep. hundred seat yep. uh, dining room, and it's awesome. Thank you. Well, what are people can what can people expect today in terms of in terms of COVID protocols? Because some people are curious what what's going to have to happen if I come in. Well, right now you just gotta you know rest assured that we're doing everything on our end to make sure that we keep you safe. We're sanitizing the tables and anything that we touch, we're wiping it down constantly throughout the day. We have a porter that comes in after we close that cleans the restaurant and sanitizes it every single day that we're open for business. Uh, some people can't afford that. We've been you know, blessed enough to be able to have that luxury and that's what it is. Um, but we are not running with, you know, plexiglass between the customer mm -hmm. and we're not wearing masks until they tell us to mm -hmm. um, we are trying our best to follow the science just like everybody else mm -hmm. but uh, we're up on the websites we know what the michigan uh, you know uh, health health department guidelines are and what they're expecting out of us so we just follow their lead we went into that second closure which was voluntary uh, to the dismay of some of our most loyal customers who did not take it well when we shut down for another two weeks the dining room and said, okay, we're going to try to do this. We're going to do our part, is what I told my staff, and we're going to try to shut down and see if we can curb our end anything. Mm -hmm. If somebody is sick, we don't let them in the building. As a customer, we're always looking for it. Uh, we temperature and check our employees, of course. But uh, that second time we did it, I don't want there to be a third time. Yeah. It's got to it's gotta be something huge. Um, you know, there's too, too much misinformation out there. Nobody mm -hmm. really knows how to take it. You listen to 200 doctors that'll tell you that they're not getting the vaccine or the nurses, and you listen to 200 more that say that you absolutely have to. Right. I think this country is a great country. I think we still have freedom of choice. I'm going to respect that from yeah. my customers and my employees. Same. So right now, uh, we'll we'll do everything on our end to yep. keep it clean, keep it safe, and keep it sterile and make sure that uh, we're not getting anyone sick. Uh, we ask the customers to do the same thing. Yeah. You know, If you got a cough, if you're not sure, come through the drive-up window. Uh, let us keep our distance. Yeah. Uh, try to do everything we can not to, uh, you know, to contain the spread, but not to make it any worse. And are you seeing the people come back, the customers, people coming in, feeling more comfortable dining in, their dining rooms filling up? We are, but I think, I think there's a new shift just recently to where they're starting to get rattled again yeah. and they're concerned because we're going into those fall months yeah. and they're not sure whether they have the common cold, the flu or, yeah. or COVID. And Who that's, knows? that's a scary thing. So yeah. I see them with more masks on coming in now and, uh, we need the guidelines. Yeah. We need the state to step up and tell us what we need to do when we need to do it because otherwise we're trying to operate restaurants. Yeah. I'm not a physician. Right. I don't know what the, right. you need us to do. Right. So, well, so, you know, the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, the workforce. You alluded yep. to that earlier. Um, you know, everyone's having a hard time finding employees, but you said all Genevieve's employees make more than $15 yep. an hour. Are you guys yep. hiring today? We're always hiring. All right. So you heard it here. If you're yeah. looking for a job in the restaurant industry and you want to learn how to do things the right way, uh, Apply at johnnyvs.com. You can get an application there, and uh, you can call the restaurant or go in as well. But it's a great place to work. Like I said, my daughter's worked there. I know several people that have, and they sure. really, really like the environment. Yeah. Well, let me elaborate on the workers, and that is uh, we're trying to get everyone back to work. Um, we want uh, to be able to staff our restaurants. Uh, we have been understaffed since COVID started. Yeah. Not just here, but the other restaurants I own, too. Uh, the Lansing market is really struggling, but even Johnny V's, but we won't just hire anyone. I right. mean, we can, right. we can all be desperate in this, in this time, but, uh, we're still holding true. Luckily I have enough family and friends around that we're able to, uh, you know, pick and choose a little bit. So if you're a good person, we'd love to have you. Yeah. If not, yeah. we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if not go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> in a nice way. Yes. Um, all right. Well, <clears throat> What is, uh, before we do our say it in yeah. 60, which everybody yeah. loves, yeah. what is a good piece of advice you would give to other business owners, maybe restaurateurs that are still trying to navigate this pandemic? Right now in this pandemic is to listen yeah. and to, to make sure you keep yourself abreast of what the mandates are, if that's what we're going to call them, mandates or the state of Michigan or your health department. Uh, we're all in this together. We understand that. But 
Do what you have to do. That's a personal choice. I'm not making decisions. Like I said, you got 50% of the customers that can't believe that we would close, and you have 50% that say, I can't believe you're open during this time. Uh, we have to be unique, and we have to do what provides for my family. We're small independent independent business owners, okay? Mm-hmm. We don't have national franchises uh, all over the country. Uh, a lot of these people don't have the ability to use a drive-up window. So their, their challenges are a lot more difficult than maybe mine would be just mm-hmm. with Johnny V's itself. But the advice that I, that I would, you know, give a personal friend or a business associate, somebody that was working with us, is do what you need to do to keep your business relevant, viable, open, safe, of course. Of course, yeah. All right, well, again, thank you so much for sharing My your pleasure. mind with us and your experience with us. Uh, I uh, It's always amazing to me when we get feedback from people who listen from all over the country. It's really incredible. Uh, what episode they listened to and what thing was said that that resonated with them and as always you know please feel free to share your feedback with us and your experience with us Um, but I want to end the episode with everybody's favorite segment called say it in 60 okay and this is where I'm going to give you 10 rapid fire questions we're going to get the last bit of knowledge we can get out of you today sure 10 rapid fire questions. Uh, The answers are your answers. So they're all right. There's no wrong answer. And if you win, you get to go home today with that (laughs) AZ mug. Appreciate it. But the truth is, even if you don't win, we're going to let you go home with it because, you know, we we, we just give participation trophies. I think I'm going to take it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That'll keep your coffee hot for five hours. Those were produced by Heather Brooks at Brooks Innovative Graphics. And so we really, really like them. But we're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. So you got to give quick answers. Are you ready? I'm ready, but they're never quick answers. Uh, well, you got no. 60 seconds. I'll do, so. I'll do my best. Let's do it. <laughs> Dan, do we have timer ready? All right. The timer starts now. What is a must-read book? Well, my next must-read book is going to be Running with the Giants by John C. Maxwell, but I read the Bible. All right. What is a daily habit everyone should do? Get down on your knees and pray. Good answer. What is your favorite podcast? I don't have one. Okay. What is a must-binge TV series? Uh, restaurant Impossible, Food Channel Network. It's kind of in my wheelhouse. Spoken like a restaurateur. <laughs> What's your why? My why, uh, I just believe that, that we do what we do and that uh, we're put here for a purpose. What is your best piece of advice? Um, make sure you surround yourself with enough good people. What is your favorite quote? Uh, 100% of nothing is still nothing if it's business. Who do you look up to? Uh, the Truett Cathy family, once again, Chick-fil-A. All right, last question. A, How much time uh, we Rob, got left? Rob Elliott, too, my executive vice president. What does success look like to you? Success to me is having the freedom to live by your values and your principles. All right. Did we make it? Nope. Oh, we just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a two, missed it by two seconds, all but right. that's all right. We're going to oh. still let you go home oh, with an AZ mug, yeah. and we appreciate you taking your time. I know how busy you are, Kevin. My pleasure. Uh, I sure. enjoy spending time with you, number one. Me too. Uh, and this format obviously is a little different, but we appreciate right. it. Right. And uh, we just want to share your journey and story with our audience, and I think that they're going to really enjoy it. And again, you know, if you're in the area, you got to go try Johnny V's. It is a two thumbs up, 10 out of 10, highly recommended the food, the experience, the atmosphere, you're going to love it. I can guarantee it. And I can't guarantee everything, but that's something I can guarantee. And if you don't, for whatever reason, they'll take care of you and they'll make sure that you do enjoy it. So before we go today, I want to let you have you look into this camera and I want you to tell our audience how they can find Johnny V's, whether that be online or by location or on social media. Online is johnnyvs.com. Obviously, uh, we have the phone number. But then more importantly, I think it's exit 105, uh, 52 and 69 come together. We'd love to see you. Welcome to Johnny V's. Yes, and they're right behind McDonald's there. Amen. And, uh, they have plenty of seating. And again, you can also follow them on Instagram and Facebook as well to keep you up to date with everything that's going on. Join their email list. They send out a weekly email newsletter to make sure that everyone's keeping up to date with what they are doing. So again, thank you, Mr. Dietrich. It was our pleasure to have you today. And thank you for uh, staying with us on this journey. And uh, we love to talk, if you haven't noticed. My Uh, pleasure to be with you, Tony. Yes, thank you so much. So, uh, again, thank you for joining us. As my mother always said, you can't and never could until you tried. So go out there and try something great, my friends. And don't take the easy way out. We'll see you next time. 